Hey everyone, DJ Ron Vest here from Anime Jam Session, part of uh, Voice of Geeks Network. We're here at AAC 2014, and they've given us permission to interview people. Don't know why, but I guess we're good people, and nobody said anything crazy about us yet. So we're here Friday morning, interviewing with the talented, majestic David Vincent. Ah, good to good to see you, Adam. Good to see you too, sir. So, what brings you up here to Mario, New England? Well, I, I was excited to get invited to come to uh, another anime convention. It was a convention that I would actually wanted to come to for quite some time. I'd never been to almost every state in the Union, but I've never been to uh, the New, New Hampshire. Oh, okay. And so, uh, it's uh, absolutely just a gorgeous state. Uh, and coming around this time of the year with the, uh, all the leaves changing and everything, and uh, getting to see the beauty that is uh, New Hampshire, and then getting to combine enjoying it an anime convention on top of that was a win-win all the way around. Gotcha. Okay. So I uh, access to everybody else here. How did you get into the voice acting industry? And best answer we heard was Crash landed through the glass plate and just made it there. <laughs> that's a that's a pretty good answer. Yeah. Um, you know how I got into voice acting? It's kind of a twofold answer. Oh. Um, I got my degree in journalism at University of Colorado in Boulder, and I made a beeline for New York City after I graduated, and I was doing stand-up and sketch comedy and theater and, and all sorts of stuff in New York. And I was doing a sketch show in Times Square, this little in this little theater in Times Square, and I was doing a sketch where I was making fun of TV commercials. Right. And so, um, making fun of these TV commercials, I'm doing all these different voices uh, for these TV commercials, and after one of my shows, I actually had a lady come up to me, um, and uh, she gives me her business card and she says, uh, do you have an agent? And I go, no. She goes, here's my card, you need to call me. And so it turns out uh, that's how I got my first uh, voiceover agent uh, with Paradigm in, uh, in Manhattan. And, uh, and I've been doing voices for years and years and years ever since. Um, but to be more specific is how I got in, into anime. Mm -hmm. You know who uh, Steve Bloom is? Yes, we all do. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows who Steve Bloom is. One of the nicest and most talented guys in the industry. So one day, uh, Steve and I had the same agent. We had been auditioning. We'd been friends for years, but uh, Steve and I, I were in uh, in the booth and we're auditioning for some radio spot. Right. And Steve looks over at me and he goes, "Hey, Dave. Yeah, man. What's up, Steve? You ever do any anime? Oh man, I've never done any anime. You should do anime." <laughs> and so, wow. and so Steve, no, he's the nicest guy in the world. And so he, he basically gives me this guy, Kevin C Seymour's, um, the late, great uh, Kevin Seymour's card. And um, he's like, contact this guy. You need, to, uh, um, you need to start doing this stuff. So contacted him, Kevin Seymour. I didn't know the first thing about ADR at that point, even though I had been doing voiceover professionally for right. years. Uh, but Kevin kind of took me under his wing and um, gave me some bit parts in, the, in some shows, uh, Ghost in the Shell, I think, and... Um, Yuki Kaze and a few other small shows, and that's actually how I got my start in uh, in the world of anime. That's pretty cool. So, who inspires you when it comes to voices? Um, you know, one of my all time well, Steve is yes. is a friend, and uh, and I admire him uh, and his talent and really just his attitude uh, and with his colleagues and, and the people that he works with. It, to, to me, that's an inspirational. Also another voice actor who inspires me um, is Dan Castellaneta. I, yes. Yeah, yes. who is uh, uh, the voice of Homer Simpson, uh, Barney, and all the other, uh, a lot of other, other voices on, on The Simpsons. I, I just I admire his, uh, his talent. Um, and for me, it would be uh, one of my, my goals would be to, to one day be able to actually work with him because he's I've always admired him. That's pretty cool. And well then let's go ahead let's see who's at the door. Um Lauren you're interrupt interrupting my interview. Hi. There you are. They told me the wrong room. So. Oh very good. <laughs> I will yeah. go get a chair. Thank you. Please do Lauren Landa, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you were filming. Yeah. Um, this is a great interview. I mean, really. Awesome. Uh, I was actually told it wasn't going to be video. Uh, yeah, that's the text that Tim texted me this morning. <laughs>
magic of technology and misinformation, we now have two wonderful people to interview today. <laughs> so, if you mind introducing yourself, I'm, I'm a little scrambled now because of all of this. I think we're all a little scrambled. Yeah. It's all good. Uh, I'm Lauren Landa, a voice actor from LA, and uh, I've worked with Ava here on a bunch of different yes. projects. And so. I'm just happy that you came to join this interview because you've made it better. <laughs> Hi! <laughs> so much better. <laughs> Um, yeah, I've done voices such as Lai Chi Fei Ling from Blaze Blue, which mm -hmm. David and I worked on for, I think, what, four or five years now? Yeah, like that. yeah we've which been working on it for a while. I have to say, bless you so much for that, that's one of my favorite favorite fighting games. Oh. It, it takes a lot for something to be a favorite fighting game, because my favorite is Rival Schools, and everything else is like, it's just random. Heard about Blaze Blue, Friend, my old roommate picked it up, I'm like, good. Okay. I love this game. <laughs> I'm like, I'm looking from the people who are guilty. No wonder I love this game! Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Guilty Gear. Big, yeah. big game. And then a couple weeks ago, when I got myself a copy of Continuum Shift, I was like, you know, so Collector's Edition, $12.99. <clears throat> Thank you, based Amazon, sold. <laughs> so now That's I have great. that with me. I'm just like, yes. Yay! <clears throat> have you played the new one yet? I don't think I have played the new one yet, but. Actually, well, new-ish. Yeah. It's like a yeah, year old a now. <laughs> I'm actually, I'm just a little more excited that I'm interviewing you because Lai Chi Fei is my favorite character because I like using characters that have all, they use uh, distance weapons because I study martial arts, so that's how I roll. So. Oh, see, when I yeah. play as her, I fail miserably because she's way too technical for me. So she's way too technical. I play as Taker because I can stomp on people. If I ever I, yeah. <laughs> kind of reminds me of Victor from Darkstalkers. I don't know who that is. <laughs> Class, it's a classic Capcom fighting game. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, Darkstalkers. Wait, that sounds familiar. Felicia, yes. Dimitri, oh, that's what it is. Yes. yes. Okay. Victor is the big Frankenstein monster. Okay, I remember Felicia. Yeah, everybody remembers Felicia. I think everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, how do you get into the industry? Uh, well, I've been acting my whole life, and I'm sorry, I'm fighting a cold right now, which is we, why I'm incredibly nasally. <laughs> we all are. It's cold. Yeah. Like the New England cold. No. Yeah, yeah, definitely, but it's beautiful outside definitely. right now. Um, I've been acting my whole life. Uh, when I was little, I got into a lot of theater productions, and then when I got to college, I took a voice and diction class, and that just happened to lead to um, a workshop that I took, which led to an audition, and then I've been doing that ever since, and I think that's about eight or nine years now. Wow, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. So, who inspires you when it comes to voices? Oh, jeez. Wow. What was the answer you gave? David Vincent. <laughs> <laughs> it was David Vincent. <laughs> oh, there's a there's a lot of people that are definitely inspiring. Um, Jim Cummings being one of them. He's great. Uh, I we I He's met great. him earlier this year. He is an amazing guy. He is very much so, and and beyond talented. It's kind of ridiculous. Um, we did a panel together uh, about two years ago, last year, about two years ago at Kineticon, and. Uh, we were reading from a Star Wars script. I was Princess Leia, and he read as Darth Vader's in the Pooh voice. Oh, that's <laughs> really funny. It's hilarious. That's right, because I texted you because I saw it on Reddit. <laughs> yeah. that's right. Everybody's like, awesome. wow, You're that video Reddit, went dude. viral. I'm like, I know, a year later. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, gosh, there's so many people. Um, um, oh, there's way too many people. Jim Cummings is definitely one of them, but... Uh, Hank Azaria is great. Too. Yes, so. yeah. Hank Azaria is great. Uh, gosh, there's so many people. What, who did you say? I, I said, well, Steve Bloom. Yes, is, absolutely. Is amazing, amazing Mary guy. Mary Elizabeth McGlynn. Mary Elizabeth's fantastic. Um, yeah. And I also said Dan Castellaneta. Oh. From The Simpsons. I've yeah. always admired his work, and uh, he blows me away whenever I see him transition between his voices. Yeah, right, yeah. right. No, he's great. He can do anything. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not get into that. <laughs> okay, um, what kind of fun stuff do you both like to do? Um, well, I in my spare time, a lot of my time is spent at the gym. I, I'm a huge fitness nerd, um, and uh, I'm a freelance photographer. I cool. think that's kind of fun. Um, I'm a huge movie buff, too. Oh, okay. Huge movie buff, so any chance I can get to see a new movie that I have any interest in, then I'll see it, and if I like it, then success. There's not a lot of new movies that are coming out that are impressing me right now. So. You have that feeling too? Yes, yeah. I do. <laughs> what about you? Um, 
you know, I'm so busy that I don't have a lot of free time, but when I do, I like to, I have a big group of friends and we will go to um, the park in uh, Sherman Oaks and we will play wiffle ball, we'll play kickball, whatever it is, so we exciting. always like meet up on the weekends uh, if, I, if I'm in town and uh, we'll go and just uh, and have fun for an afternoon just playing, like, pretending like we're kids again. Like, oh, that's kickball. awesome. Ball. It's fun. Should. I've been meaning to. Just well, to I, get don't out to the, the I don't get to the gym that much, which I should. Oh. <laughs> but you do yoga, don't you? Uh, yeah. yeah. When, I, when I can, yeah. Yeah. Hey, that's something. You know, I can't remember the last time I've been to a park. I've walked past one, but <laughs> that's because I'm on my way to work and it's like, well, here's your iPhone. You know. No. And they come back to me later and it's like, I can't check my email. Well, you have to log in with your iTunes account so you can check your corporate mail. What's an iTunes account? Yeah. <laughs> it is what it is. It is. Uh, let's see that. What other roles have you done besides uh, Light You Failing that I fanboyed about for a good 30 seconds? Uh, well, there's Kasumi from Dead or Alive 5. <laughs> There's Jan Leisha from Soul Calibur 5. A lot of fives. Yeah. I'm mean, saying a lot of fives. Um, uh, I was Kyoko Sakura and Maruka Magica. That's one of my own girls. Yeah. yeah. Um, what else? Oh, uh, uh, Leia from Tales of Exilia. Okay. Uh, and Tales of Exilia 2. Uh, Little Queen in Tales of Graces. Um, uh, Annie Landhart from Attack on Titan, which is probably one of my favorite roles. <laughs> um, let's see what else. Oh, there's just been a bunch. Um, oh, and female Robin in Super Smash Brothers. So, and this is my male counterpart. Yeah. <laughs> so there's going to be a lot of smashing this weekend. Yes. Smashing. It'll be a smashing <laughs> weekend. One of my friends, he already broke the control stick on his 3DS. Out of anger? Uh, no, no just I've out actually of heard uh, oh. a lot of people yes. doing that with their 3DSs because they're playing Smash Brothers and they get so into it that they break it. They their break stick. it. Oh, we're causing people to break yeah. their 3DSs. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> it's one of the reasons why I've been holding off on picking it up. I'm like, I don't know. I'm going to be mighty pissed. But, uh, you know, I'm like, ah. Uh. <laughs> like, why not play with a control stick? Um, you know, is it so? It's only for the 3DS, right? And it's the coming Wii out on Wii U. Oh, see, I would yeah. probably be more of a Wii player um, for that yeah. kind of game specifically, because with fighting games, I I just oh I suck at them. So I am definitely a button masher. So I'd probably too. break my 3DS. I mean, there are a couple of fighting games that have ported over pretty well to so 3DS. Uh, I know Super Street Fighter was a good one. Um, I think one of the Guilty Gears made its way over. I think Blaze Blue did. Yeah. I found that out because at Matsuri in 2013, uh, Sean Schimmel was a guest there too, and he's the voice of Goku from Dragon Ball Z. Yes. And we were on a panel, doing a voiceover panel, and then somebody asked a question, and we were telling each other our credits, and then finally I mentioned Lychee, and Sean, Sean's head for a second, he says, I'm playing you right now! And he showed us that he has this play play. I remember that. It was so funny. <laughs> Uh, I would have loved to have been there for that. That would have been amazing. Oh, uh, yeah. For, for the, the panel? Yeah, that too. Well, I mean, Sean's a great yeah, guy, yeah. so. I, I remember, I think he was from, he was from Jersey originally, I think. Probably. I know he lived yeah. in New York City for a long yeah, time. He, yeah, he used to live out this way. Uh, I've, heard, I've heard good things about him. He's a good guy. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, particular voices you just love to do? Um... I like to do Grim Joe's voice from Leech. Um, one that I mean, I'm, there's a character that I'm doing in a, a children's show right now mm -hmm. um, that's on Sprout, uh, part of uh, PBS Kids, and um, the character is Mr. Niblet. <laughs> and he is oh teaching the children how fun exercise is, Aww. and it is so fun to go get paid to talk like this. That's so cute. So that one's a good one. Um, I love doing martial law. In Tekken, um, all of anyone that gets me paid is my favorite boy. <laughs> <laughs> good, the quote from Family Feud. Good answer. Good answer. There you go. Yeah. Uh, oh gosh, you know, I uh, I like to do different kinds. I love to do the sexy. I think that's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. I like to do the the higher pitched. You know, like Kyoko, she's kind of fun. It's out of 
it's out, it's not out of my range, it's out of uh, my comfort zone, so to speak, so I like that it's a challenge. Um, and Annie is definitely uh, becoming one of my favorites because I don't mm -hmm. usually play characters like her. She's very uh, monotone and emotionless and all of that, and I hardly ever play those characters, so definitely uh, those kind of voices are fun. And Squiggly from Skullgirls, that's another fun one. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. So it seems like getting out of your comfort zone, it kind of pushes you to be more, uh, more into it, more fun, you know. It's like, I'm over here, but it's not so bad. Uh, yeah, yeah, pretty much. I mean, it's a it's a stretch, and obviously the casting director knows that we can get to that point, so otherwise we wouldn't be cast in right. those roles, True so, that. yeah. Uh, now, are there, are there roles you've done where you know, like you wasn't sure you could do it because it was like a little bit like because of difficulty range? Not talking like outside of your comfort zone, but it's like yeah, it looks easy enough, but it's like wait, so much for that. I did um, a motion capture and I did a bunch of voices uh, for uh, the feature film Resident Evil uh, Damnation. Okay. And I had auditioned for it probably four times, <clears throat> and they brought they brought me back, and uh, said, "Dave, we really really like you for this role. Now we need you to do it in a Russian accent, which is the one accent that I'm horrible at." Really? Yes. And so I had to practice, 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 doing doing the Russian, and rolling my R's, <laughs> and uh, and, to, and uh, luckily I landed the part. But I mean and. Even recording it, I was having a struggle. I felt like I was struggling through it, even though like I got through it and whatnot. And obviously, I got a job, but <laughs> that was a tough one for me. Um, I think oh, the only one that I can remember was a little game where um, I did a character that had a speech impediment, and for a while, it's pretty easy to do to talk through your teeth mm -hmm. as if you have a mouth full of spit, right. but. Uh, after about 20 minutes, it's very difficult to keep that up because your mouth gets very tired. Your yeah. muscles get very tired after that. So after a while, that was pretty tough to do. But that's the only one that I can think of. I know that's not necessarily right. Right. But the people that those and then the throat rippers. Yeah. Oh. The combat games. Those ones are tough. Your horse after like 20 minutes. You know, usually after a video game session, I'm pretty beat. I'm yeah. pretty tired. Um, but I remember... For Dragon Guard 3, which yeah. is a new Square Enix game, I, I think that is the game that I screamed the most throughout the session. It was so much fun and I had a blast, but oh, I just could not talk at the end of the day. So yeah, that, was, that was pretty tough. Pretty tough. And I also had to scream a lot for Annie. Uh, yeah, that was yeah. all. I, I, that was, I was done. <laughs> that day, my voice was just done. <laughs> What would you tell to other people who want to get into the industry, you know? Uh, well, I would suggest uh, just definitely get into some theater. Do theater. Mm -hmm. Do theater. Theater basically helps train you for everything. Um, and get into some improv classes, join your community theater, start auditioning for shows, get kind of uh, comfortable with performing in front of people because that's basically what we do. Yep is we are in a booth and we are performing for other people. It may not be as many people as you would in a stage production. However, it, it's a bit more intimidating, actually, I think, because it's not for as many people, and yeah. they are, it's a lot of criticism that comes it, with it. Well, so. yeah, yeah, you can have thick skin. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, what Lauren said is, is absolutely true. Get on stage, go do theater. Mm -hmm. If you're still in school, you're th that's a perfect opportunity to get on stage. Absolutely. Join your drama team. Get on stage if you're out of school, community theater, take classes, mm -hmm. okay? Um, whatever city that, you, that, that you're in, uh, maybe your local college, whatever, they will offer classes. Um, and there are some online classes that you can take as well. Just make sure that your uh, instructors are entirely reputable and have got a laundry list of valid credits. Right. Um, don't take there's some folks out there that like to take people's money and not really have a lot of... Like the Acme I, School of Acting? Exactly, the Acme School of Acting. Or, or but, but do take classes because yeah. they're very important right. and workshops and things like that. Um, uh, I occasionally do traveling workshops as well where I bring a casting director and an agent with me. So look out for stuff like that because that's how, number one, you're going to learn from professionals who are working in the industry 
and two, um, you have opportunities to meet uh, casting professionals and, and et cetera, et cetera. Right, right. Not to mention, you mentioned being careful about who to take classes mm -hmm. from. I wouldn't necessarily go with, because I know in LA we have these, we have uh, cars that drive around with advertisements on the top yeah. of them that say voiceover workshops. I, I wouldn't trust those. That's just me personally. <laughs> yeah, just um, look for who's teaching it and right. look at what they've done. Mm -hmm. Look at what they've done. Right. So definitely take classes. Uh, improv, theater, we went over all of that. Yeah. Um, just try and uh, just try and experiment with your voice. If it's mainly voice acting that you want to do, you have to remember that it, it is acting. It's not just doing yes. funny voices. You do have to uh, come up with your own voices, original voices for mm -hmm. different characters. Create different characters and create voices for those characters. It's really a whole process, but just see what you can do. See how high you can go, see how low you can go, but still try and make it sound uh, dare I say it, good. <laughs> yeah, well that would be able to maintain that voice for four hours at least. Um, right. Also, and this is just a, is a bit of professional advice for anybody who's interested in making money with their voice as a voice actor, doing the animation, the video games, and things like that is a, a slice of the pie. There's so much other voiceover work out there, um, most people don't realize that it's it's Grimjow going, Kmart, lowest sale prices every time. <laughs> that type of stuff. Yeah. That's a big portion of income uh, for voice actors. So make sure that you keep yourself open to all different aspects of voice performance. Absolutely. Don't limit yourself to just anime. I know a lot of people that want to just do nothing but anime. So. Yeah. And that's uh, fine, but... Sure. Absolutely. It's great. Power to you. Yeah. Um, and have a lot more opportunity exactly. to broaden your spectrum. Right. I have a few of those on my Facebook, and it's like, you know, you should do more than just anime, and it's like, no, but this is all I want to do. Are you sure? This is all... Okay. You know. Cartoon. Yeah, exactly. So I think we're going to wrap it up now, because I think we got a lot of chaotic footage, which is going to be pretty fun. <laughs> yeah, you enjoy editing that. Oh, yeah! yeah. <laughs> and if my staff knows me, it'll be like seven months later. Did you get to the AAC footage? I'm still on Anime Next. Uh, <laughs> All right, no, I'm done. I'm working on AAC now. Uh -huh. When is it going to be done? Um, maybe a week. Maybe. <laughs> All right, we're going to get out of here. Later, everyone.